Kill me mean anything to you. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not for you to be sorry. Dear and forth, I ask the board for air conditioning. We get that. A bottle. Ceiling fan that's been lying around for 40 years. <laughs> sure would you look like a commercial for cold medicine. On a slug? Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. <clears throat> Is there any word on my replacement? He's on his way. But you don't have to stick around. I'll hold the fort. Oh, God bless you, Mrs. Burke. <laughs> oh, don't forget your chicken soup. Oh. Excuse me, may I have your attention, please? Miss Sherwood has gone home ill. Oh. <laughs> this class will be taught by a substitute, a Mr. Quigley. Quigley. William, William Quigley. Quigley. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> <laughs> no echo, dear lady. You are looking at the real thing. Welcome aboard, Mr. Quigley. Now, you be nice to Mr. Quigley. It's usually open season on substitutes around here. The last one went home with a twitch. Don't worry about me. I've already got a twitch. You've already got <laughs> You're a panic. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I don't Don Quixote. Is that what you're studying? That's what it says on the cover. <laughs> Mine has no cover. Get used to it. <laughs> you got one of the good ones. <laughs> well, we'll have to do something about that, won't we? However, cover or no cover, what do you think, Mr. Uh... Velasquez? Velasquez. What do I think? Well, I mean, that may have been one of the greatest books of all time, but to tell you the truth, it really doesn't do it for me. I think it was all hype. Uh, I, yeah, this crazy old man wakes up one day and decides he's going to be a nut and runs around looking for some uh, great enemy that didn't even exist. <laughs> there you're wrong. The great enemy did exist. He existed in Don Quixote's time and he exists now. Then who is he? The great enemy is anyone who stands in the way of purity, honor, truth. I don't know. I think we're talking about a nutcase here. I mean, this guy traveled all around the country with some sword. Tilting at windmills. Yeah. I don't see what's so great about that. I don't either. But isn't there something great about a man who is blind to the ugliness, the pettiness, the imperfections of life, who sees a jackass as a noble steed, a windmill as a giant, and a harlot? As a lady, a man who has the courage to live his dreams and make them real. Isn't that what all of you hope to do? Tomorrow morning, any word from the Board of Education about my brass section? Yes, and the word is no. Mr. Dearnforth, did the Board of Ed say anything about my new dance floor? Yes, they did, Miss Grant. They only laughed. No, not now. Well, would you tell them that I'm not 
going to believe that on this one I'm going to have the last laugh? <laughs> Not any time. Mr. Aaron Florence. No. I haven't told you what I want. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Quigley. What can I do for you? It isn't what you can do for me. It's what you can do for the school. Mr. Derenforth, is now a good time to talk about my raise? <laughs> and what I have been trying to do. Those books have been on requisition. Requisition meaning no action. That's not entirely true. They're sitting in a warehouse on 36. Right. If my kids hurt and you don't care, then I don't care. And they've got our name on them. Isn't that so, Mrs. Burke? Absolutely. And they've been sitting down there for nine months. Nine months? Well, then I'd say it's time to start delivering them. Don't you think I have made phone calls? I, I filled out those requisitions personally. I hand-signed them and everything. The only thing that's holding those books is red tape. Well, I think it's time that someone went down to the board and kicked some butt. Mrs. Burke, I'm shocked. You're also without books. Mm. What would you have me do? Go down there to the warehouse and steal them? Okay, Mr. Quigley. Well, you tell me. Look at the condition of these books compared to those relics that we're using at the school. That's not what I mean. I just kind of get the feeling that what we're doing isn't quite legal, that's all. Well, what gave you that impression? Well, maybe it's the way you had to pick the lock to get into this joint. I didn't pick the lock. I used a credit card. Now, Jesse, Jesse, this is not theft. It's merely a way of avoiding red tape. I wonder what the judge would say about that. It's just that I don't want to wind up in jail, that's all. Velasquez, have you ever considered there are some things worth going to jail for? How's it going? Oh, uh, slowly. But we seem to be getting the job done. Uh, uh, you two, uh, you work here. Officer, if your concern is that my friend and I are stealing these books, let me put your mind at rest. We are not. You're not. We are not. We are simply taking what is ours, and I think that this requisition slip will bear me out. <clears throat> this document is nine months old. Don't we know it? All right, Mr. Velasquez, into the truck. Into the truck. Start up the engine. Go on. <clears throat> Sir, excuse me. This, uh, this is your signature here. Well, don't I wish. My... My signature is atrocious. Uh, what's he doing? Starting up the engine. Yep, yeah, it's late. He has school tomorrow. We both do. Uh, stay here. I told you to start this up. He did. Come up and away, Sancho. We haven't got all night. I just took some books down there. Oh, those were algebra. This is geometry. Now, come on, we want to feed those hungry little minds, don't we? Had a boy. I just took those books down to the civic class. What's Fine, next? good. Uh, science, science, here we go. How are we doing on history, Mr. Jimmy. Velasquez? Oh, they're Velasquez. almost ready to go, sir. Good, 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 man. Nicole, would you run these down to the history class for me? Oh. Well, come on. How do you expect those hungry little minds to learn? Without English, history? where are my English? Ah, here, here they are, here. Mr. Quigley. Ah, Mr. Darren Forrest. Good morning. Ah, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, can you tell me where these books came from? Certainly. The warehouse on 36th Street, where they were being stored. Mm -hmm. 
You actually went down there yourself? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You don't think that these books walked here by themselves, do you? <laughs> All right, here we go. On the way now. I Anything see. We'll talk about this later. I'm sorry. What for? For whatever it is that's hurting you. It's nothing. See, I just had something in my eye, but it's okay now. You have a beautiful voice. Yeah. Well, try telling them that. Them? The people who cast the parts for the show. You know, the ones who make the decisions. I guess I'm just not a leading lady. Well, if they're thinking that, they're making a terrible mistake. How can you say that? You don't know me. To hear you sing is to know you. I have to go. Mendenhall, for the last time, a horse is a horse. A jackass, on the other hand, is a cross between a horse and a mule. What happens if you cross a mule and a jackass? Nothing. They both just have fun. So Don Quixote is this great knight, right? And Sancho Panza is a squire. Yeah, well, uh, I know that. I'm playing Don Quixote, remember? All right, so then you know the real meaning of the word squire. A squire is someone who loves his master so much, he'll follow him into hell. Well, I don't know if you're gonna go to hell by hanging around Quigley, uh, but you may go to jail. Some things are worth going to jail for, man. Jello, you call this jello? It's nothing but colored water. And these sandwiches. Soggy. Probably been here for days. Hmm? How dare you serve this swill? Swill? Oh, I'm sorry, madam. Pardon me. I, I'm sure it's not your fault. Mr. Quigley, would you mind telling me what's going on? Not at all, Mr. Derenforth. We are striking back. We are retaliating against the great enemy. The great enemy? I... I don't see any enemy. That's the advantage he has over us. He appears to be invisible, but he's not. I see. Um, where is he now? Right under our noses. This is his handiwork. His handiwork? Mm -hmm. Are we talking about this jello? Oh, I know. It seems like a little thing to you. But is it? Remember, Mr. D. Food is fuel. Food is fuel! Taste No, 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 taste Now, identify it. Strawberry? He's fooled you, too. The great enemy! He's not just my adversary, he's yours as well. The time has come for us to defy him. And I say, the time is now. Something wrong with our lives Honesty has lost its meaning Only the heartless seem to survive Why do we turn and look away? Deaf, dumb and blind It's time to say what's been on our minds We are the ones who have the power We are the ones who light the fire We are the ones who can conquer the
on your armor Then rise up tall, courageous and strong It's our quest to fight for honor And separate the right from the wrong We must attack all that's unjust And turn it around If you got the guts Come join me right now We are the ones who have the power I got a little carried away by this jello thing. It's time to say what's been on our minds. William Quigley graduated with honors from Yale, fourth in a class of 900. His thesis was on the continued inhumanity of man against man throughout the ages. A rather broad-based thesis, wouldn't you say? There's more. Arrested in 1968 for protesting against the Vietnam War outside the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Marched with Dr. King in Atlanta. Led a party of dissidents to the steps of the Capitol in 1976 to protest against violations of human rights. And now this last incident, the Jell-O. On the personal side, he was married to the same woman for 30 years, no children. His wife died about a year and a half ago. He went on sabbatical after that and came back to teaching about three months ago. Mr. Dearenforth, is this really necessary? I feel like we're dissecting this man. On the contrary, Miss Grant, we're trying to put him back together. By putting him under a microscope? Doesn't seem fair. Well, we are talking here about a man who thinks there's a plot afoot because the strawberry jello is watery. It was raspberry and it was watery. This is not funny. If the board ever heard about his little escapade at 36th Street... They would order a hearing. Yes, Mr. Shirovsky, and I'm not sure they'd be wrong. Well, there seems to be a question here. Question? Whether or not Mr. Quigley is mentally fit. Try to stop me, Willie! All right, let them try! I have faced a great enemy before, and I will face him again! Sancho! My loyal squire, I'm glad you're here together. We will destroy our adversary. Are you all right, sir? All right. Am I all right? Of course I'm all right. I'm more than all right. I'm prepared to do battle. Mr. Quigley, Shh. I... Shh. The enemy is near. We cannot see him yet, but he is very near. Listen. Do you hear him? Not really. Shh. He's been here all the time, waiting waiting for us. Well, we are ready. My lance, where is my lance? Sir! Prepare to die, sir! Oh, no, Mr. Quigley. Stand by, Sancho. I strike a blow for right. Sir! Sancho, I think I may be in for the fight of my life. Can I help you? Uh-huh. I was looking for Mrs. Berg, but, um, see, I need a pass to get out of school Thursday. Thursday? Well, all right. Paper? Well, I'll tell you what. We'll just use the back of one of these IQ tests. IQ tests? Mm-hmm. Go. 
Thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute, sir. Can I ask you something? Who are you really? You know, I've often asked myself that same question. Did you ever notice that sometimes people don't seem to be who they really are? I mean, it's like they're from another time or another place. Like there's some magic about them. Matter of fact, I have noticed that about you. Really? Really. Because, <laughs> see, I kind of felt that way about you. Perhaps we knew each other in another life. <laughs> Do you really think that's possible? <laughs> All things are possible. I think that in a previous life, you were a songbird. Me? What else? And that's why you must never even think about giving up. Well, who said I was thinking about giving up? Weren't you? Maybe. I mean, I just don't feel like singing anymore. Is that a crime? Is that a crime? Would it be a crime if the sun never rose? If the ocean stopped roaring? If the stars never showed themselves in the night sky? Yeah, I guess. There you are. Thank you. Mr. Quigley, could we speak with you for a moment, please? What does it have to be now? I was really looking forward to shredding the rest of these IQ tests. Uh, yes, well, um, it's the IQ tests that we wanted to talk about. These people... I know who these three are, the Board of Education. 33% of the students in this school score genius, and you administered their tests. That's right, I did. And there's some thought that you tampered with them. I did. And I am tampering with them now. Why? Because IQ tests are stupid. Do you really think you have the right to decide that? How dare we, how dare any of us think that we can, well, determine just what this young man's potential might be, just how bright he is, or this young lady, or this girl, or any of these people. Do we think that we can simply stick test papers under their noses and evaluate them? No! They are not machines, automatons. They are human beings! Human beings! Mr. Quigley! Why, for all we know, this child can go to the moon. These children can go to the sun, the stars. Beyond. Mr. Quigley. Listen. Listen to this young man. Can't you hear? He's speaking from his very soul. And do you know what he's saying? What? He is saying there is music in him. And sometimes when words fail him, he can speak through his violin. And he's saying, even though he doesn't understand life with all its pain and all its pleasure, with all its beauty and all its ugliness, still, he loves it. And through it all, he is saying, I kill Tessar, stupid! Yeah! You should try again. And the part hasn't been cast yet. I don't know. You have the voice for it. You sing like a bird. Somebody else told me that. Hi, Mr. Quigley. Mr. Quigley? Sir, shouldn't you be going home? Home? Yes, sir. It's getting late. Tomorrow's another day. Uh-huh. 
That's what Amy says. She tells me that all the time. Amy? My wife. Yeah, she says that I work too hard, take things too seriously. You agree with that? I don't know, sir. I've never met her. That's too bad. <laughs> you would have liked her. She was... She was... Mr. Quigley, there you are. Um, would, uh, would you care to have dinner with me? Dinner? No, no. I really couldn't do that to Amy. She has dinner waiting for me every night when I come home. Thank you, just the same. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, really important that we talk. Uh, see, after your, your, this afternoon, after that, I, uh, I met with the board. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't envy you. We talked, uh, we talked a lot about you. Well, now you really have my sympathy. <laughs> How boring for you. We have a problem, uh, a big problem. They've suspended you. I'm sorry, I really am. You're a wonderful teacher. You have something that most of them don't have. You care. No! 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 Mr. Quigley! I will not just stand by and let this happen. Mr. Velasquez, get the lights on before he hurts himself. Never! <laughs> Never! <laughs> has struck a blow, but they have not vanquished me. They will never vanquish me, because I fight for something that they could never understand, never. Huh? Purely. Honor. Right now, right now. What are you children doing, just sitting around playing whatnot? This is supposed to be a rehearsal. We don't feel like rehearsing. Not after what happened to Mr. Quigley. Look, I feel the same way as you do about Mr. Quigley, but his methods were just a bit too harsh. Miss Graham, what are you trying to say? That he was wrong for getting us our books? For getting us to believe in ourselves? Was he wrong for caring about us? No, but just caring isn't good enough reason for you to just do what you please, even if your intentions are good. Even so, it doesn't give anyone a right to put Mr. Quigley in a loony bin, right? Yeah. That's right. I guess loony bin says it. He had a good effect on the students. He gave them something to hope for, something to believe in. In a way, he gave the teachers something to believe in, too. He showed us... Well, he showed us. Now, I'm going to miss him. I know you all are, too. I just think we ought to talk about it. 
I, Mrs. Burke, I don't want to hear about it. I know all about it. There's still no hot water, only now it's in both locker rooms. And I know what you're all thinking. If Quigley were here, we would have hot water. We'd have more than that. We'd have a new boiler. Do you know how many times I have asked for a new boiler, do you? Well, what would you have me do? Go out and steal one? The next person who mentions Quigley is in trouble. I am not William Quigley. I am just plain old Bob Deerenforth. That's who I am. And that's, whether you like it or not, all you're going to get. him too. I didn't say that I missed him. You didn't have to. I've got to go. Why is it so hard for you to admit it? Because I don't miss him. I don't. I don't even feel sorry for him. He was full of it. A dreamer. And he tried to make dreamers out the rest of us. And what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that. It's got nothing to do with being in the real world. It's make-believe. A shadow. All I know is, is that I felt good when I was with him. 
Yeah. But how long did it last? The man was crazy. A crazy man who filled our heads with thoughts that had no business being there in the first place. Face it, Jesse. Because he took us for a ride. Quigley, please. Are you a relative? No. Well, friends aren't allowed to see him. I'm not a friend. Well, if you're not a relative and you're not a friend, what are you? I guess you could say I'm his squire. What? Never mind. Jesse Velasquez, from the School of the Arts. I'm a student there. I'm in your, well, I was in your class. You taught English. <laughs> For God's sakes, Velasquez. I know who you are. I know where you're from. I'm well aware of the fact that I'm an English teacher. Yes. They just locked me up in here. They didn't give me a lobotomy. So you're all right. Well, that's a matter of opinion. You ask them out there. I really belong in this funny farm, and I'm not at all sure that they're wrong. What are you talking about? You're fine. Am I? How many people do you know, Velasquez? Who act the way I do? Let's face it, you just can't go around attacking ceiling fans and expect people to look the other way. Yeah, but you don't belong here. Oh, that's where you're wrong. This place was made for me. Here you can do all the things that I do, and they give you lunch. Okay, so you're a little eccentric. There's a big difference between that and being crazy. You better go, son. Why? Well... Let's put it this way. I'm glad you came, but I'm sorry you're here. You know, we miss you at school. Everybody does. It's just not the same without you. I should hope not. I nearly leveled that place, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Funny. When someone comes to this place, people usually ask, you know, where are you? And the response is, oh, he's in Bellevue for observation. But they've got it wrong. They, uh, they think the doctors are observing the patients, but the truth is, it's the patient who is observing the patient. You follow me, Velasquez? Not really. Sitting here alone like this has forced me to take a hard look at myself. And after that hard look, I have concluded that I'm a fake. You're not a fake. Yes, I am. I am a great fake. I am not the Pied Piper of Hamlin or Cyrano de Bergerac. I am not Don Quixote. I'm like that guy in The Music Man the anvil salesman who took the whole town down the toilet by promising them a marching band. 
If you remember the rest of the play, that anvil salesman eventually did deliver that marching band. Yes, I know. Do you see any marching band, Velasquez? Help! Help! I'm being abducted! Help! Okay. It's all right. I've got it under control. Just taking him for some shock treatment. You can go to jail for this. Do you realize that? Some things are worth going to jail for. He's not taking me for shock treatments. He's abducting me. What's the matter here? Are you all out of your minds? Don't you realize that this man is abducting me? A couple of zaps, he'll be all right. Well. Hey, Jesse. Jesse, take me back. There's nothing for me here. Don't be so sure, Mr. Griffin. Nice to see you, Mr. Quigley. Glad to have you back, Mrs. Quigley. Mr. Quigley, great. English hasn't been the same without you. I got the part of Aldonza. It's great to see you, Mr. Quigley. Welcome back. Mr. Quigley, you are a sight for so Mr. Quigley, did you hear? They're going to change the way they grade the IQ test. Welcome back. Elizabeth Sherwood, thank you for my English books. I did it. I fixed the boiler. Who needs the board when you got Bob Deeran for it? <laughs> I took a page out of your book, made a big stink, and now I got my brass section. Brass section? Next week, The Loners. When you play by your own rules, you can't make mistakes or you lose. James Kahn, Michael Pere, Sean Penn, and Kurt Russell are The Loners all next week. Now, stay tuned for Dempsey and Makepeace next here on Channel 5.